our rights. I'm going to talk about sovereignty. I'm um, in Seattle right now, actually, outside of Substation, where we just soundchecked. We're starting our West Coast leg of our tour. I also just turned on cinematic mode, which I've never done before on my phone. Hopefully it looks good. That's from here. Um, so the basic idea of sovereignty is, um, you know, first of all, that it's one of four aspects of, um, I guess, like being truly awake or something, um, or uh, thriving, living with hygienic consciousness capable of contributing to um, the building of the kingdom of heaven on earth. And um, this is, you know, the, the four sovereignty, hierarchy, emancipation, individuation, um, you know, three of them relate to the outside world, um, you know, to, I guess, like, you know, achievement, creation and like interaction with other people um and sovereignty comes before any of those or um is maybe simultaneous and ongoing but is is not directed toward the outside world um it's it's something that you uh sort of do to yourself uh, it's like a, a a technique of desire i guess so, um, there's this theme that one encounters everywhere, um, though it's languaged in different ways and sometimes obscured and sometimes sounds too simplistic and like it doesn't matter for that reason. Um, but that, that basically, uh, one has a a choice kind of or one one is typically living either um either motivated by uh external sources of desire or or one can be sort of animated by um an internal source of desire um and that internal source of desire you know in in some cases it's uh, identified as God's will, um, it can also be identified as sort of your own creative fulfillment or uniqueness, um, or, or it could be reason too. And I think that there's, um, there's a way to synthesize all those things. Um, but part of why this is a law and not a concept, I think, is that it's not, um, it's hard to say exactly what it is um and i'm not sure that i know also you know it's this is something that i think about a lot and i've you know thought about it enough and encountered it enough and read about it enough uh to um have, have a conception of it but uh you know i'm still still learning as well and um and External sources of desire are false idols. Like I think the theme of the golden calf uh, is a nice metaphor for this. Um, you know, one can be w without realizing, and because it, it's it's typically self-deceptive too. And like that's something Plato says that like no no one would willingly choose um, sin or choose uh evil uh but uh w one can be deceived and there are classes of external objects of desire um you know they can be you know we're born into a world that has uh general social ideals that we internalize as our own i um, thinking that we understand them or can justify them, but in fact, we're internalizing them either out of fear or out of a kind of opportunism, um, because we'll be 
harmed uh, if we if we go against the grain, go against the herd. Um, so it can be a general social thing. You know, it can be uh, your family. Uh, you know, some some kind of tradition that you were um, uh, raised in or you know, born into. Uh, it can be particular people. You know, some someone that you are in love with or love uh, or hate. Uh, um, where you'll you'll sort of you're willing to betray yourself or even um, lie to yourself about what you really care about in order to maintain contact with somebody, um, uh, either a caretaker or a lover or a friend, um, and then I, I guess there's like addiction to you know, there's drugs. Uh, food, like uh, entertainment. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's a really big one too. You know, people, so, people are so in the habit of, um, without being able to stop, you know, spending their time, uh, sort of uh, like living in fear and kind of experiencing self-loathing while continuing to consume, you know, I, either drugs or, or the internet or something. Um, and it is, you know, there's, there's always fear motivating, there's always fear, I guess, underlying motivation by a false idol. And it always produces uh, hate, um, or maybe a softer term is resentment, but, um, you know, s smoldering anger, anger that isn't acted upon, is, is kind of contained, um, uh, and sort of just colors the way you interact with the world. And, and also self-hate, you know, um, whether you, even if your true will is not conscious, if you're not allowing it to blossom, you, um, your self-esteem goes down, um, or at least mine does, um, and you, you sort of hate yourself and you're, um, and then the, the, the satisfaction that would come from, uh, uh, you know, pr pursuing, uh, that sort of true will, uh, it, it, you, you get it, you, uh, sort of cling to a substitute or something like that. It's like God's light is sort of just radiating down, um, and... The ideal is to sort of be able to open your receptor and receive it directly, but it's also reflected on things. You know, it's like shiny objects, like the golden calf, or the um, you know, in Plato's caves, the shadows on the wall. And you can think those are real um, and then desire them, um, but they're actually not. And it's not just an intellectual illusion, you know, it's a habitual and emotional illusion. And, you know, becoming detached from those can be really, really painful, really, really painful, really, really difficult, you know. This is what 12-step uh, programs are for. Um, so then there's, so there's detaching from heteronymous desire, which is, I guess, a kind of slavery or a subjugation that's the opposite of sovereignty um you know so sovereignty you know, means you know self self rule um uh but then there's there's another more sort of purely positive ongoing process you know which is that uh one can devote time to making one's true desire uh, present to oneself. So we have, you know, we have feeling and imagination and, uh, you know, words, or concepts. You know, humans are Trinitarian beings. And um, it's a little cloudy how exactly you divide up the three, but um, it's pretty much that, you know, f feelings, images. We can actually we have an imagination power, you know, we can choose to imagine um, and we can uh, 
in some, to some degree, choose how we feel. We can cultivate certain kinds of feelings, and it's a big part of what religion is about. Um, and also things like yoga and exercise and uh, whatever. You know, people get that. Like, people get like a runner's high from running or whatever. I am not a runner, but um, feeling, image, and then words. You know, you you have you have ideas in your mind. Like we we kind of forget that like even as we walk down the street, you know, there's, we're sort of running, there's thoughts. Uh, Lacan calls it the discourant, uh, which is like a, an LP basically going around. That there's thoughts and a lot of them are actually, you know, criticizing me and you know, criticizing us, um, keeping us in like a self state that's like lower. Um, and so, you know, but part of sovereignty is really just cultivating a practice of making cont remember, just simply remembering if you already kind of know um, what your unique true will is. And then, um, you know, have, uh, establishing a kind of aesthetic relationship to it, you know, maybe like um, yes, stuff like that is in like pretty basic self-help books, you know, like um, just, you know, ima <laughs> imagining that your dreams will come true, um, saying affirmations, uh, things like that. Um, that, that. That's real stuff. Uh, and it doesn't, I don't think it works in isolation. There are other, there are, um, there are other laws that it kind of needs to go with. And you can be self-deceiving when you do that stuff too. And that's again where it kind of gets confusing uh, what is God's will versus what is um, yet another layer of self-will that you um, falsely believe to be your true will and then you end up kind of um, intensifying and amplifying and you're actually still enslaved. Um, I think that's like, like an Andrew Tate kind of thing basically where you sort of, you have a toxic idea of sort of what happiness is, and then you just like, you know, you go hard, um, like, you know, pick up artist culture. Uh, I know I'm mentioning those things, I think, because maybe it's actually helpful to make it not sound so obscure, um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's like the fallen version of, of this. But, um, I've, I've probably said enough, I don't want these videos to be too long, but like, you know, so as a, as just a personal ideal, sovereignty is using your imagination, verbal, conceptual abilities, and ability to feel, to like, perform, like to actually take time, take time cultivating a kind of God's love that is also a self-love. Um, and, um, you know, one, one can imagine, the, I guess the idea is kind of that one, one could imagine a society where that is as much of a, of a, um, a right or an ideal as, um, what we currently think of as freedom is, um, currently. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, so that's... That's kind of a very casual primer on the kind of thing that I have in mind when I, when I use the word sovereignty. And I guess the last thing I'll say is that, um, like, it's kind of dangerous in a way, you know, because you, um, it's a book I love by Reich called The Murder of Christ. Uh, you, if, if you're really doing this, you will cause people to hate you. Um, and uh, because part, part of what binds certain kinds of social groups together is a sort of shared submission um, where sh sort of shame descends upon a group of people and they all submit to some kind of authority and then uh, they have this self-hate, and if anybody, and it's unconscious again, um, 
And so if anybody doesn't do that too, without really knowing why, they will instinctively uh, hate that person and try to harm them and you know, just feel disgusted. Um, and they might say that there is a moral rule that they know is right, um, that that other person is, is transgressing. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then what's tricky there is that there, there's also, I like, I like the term transgressionism. So there's a version of that that sees itself as transgressive, um, but, the, and, um, but the exact same thing is actually happening, where there, there's a culture of transgression that's like kind of dark and scary. Uh, real, real transgression is always, you, you can tell, you can tell real transgression from fake transgression because the first one is in some way obviously loving. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll say is that as far as the unconscious, I already said last thing a couple times, but, uh, you, you're teaching, you teach your unconscious that your dreams, that God loves your dreams. And then I, you know, I think we do have a kind of power to, if we unconsciously believe something enough that it, it becomes so in ways that uh, go beyond like what we think of as our own agency. Like sometimes things just start happening, you know, if you really believe that they're gonna happen enough. W whether they are good or bad, you know, so um, there's, a, there's a phrase I love, every thought is a prayer. Um, I think that's really true, that um, you know, we're, we're kind of manifesting whether we want to or not.